Ever wondered why you act on impulse, even when you know it's not the best course of action? Well, let's delve into an intriguing part of our brain that might just hold the answer, the reptilian brain. As the oldest part of the human brain, it's like a fossil that carries the imprints of our evolutionary history. It's primitive, it's raw, it's instinctual. The reptilian brain, or the basal ganglia, as the neuroscientists call it, is the part of our brain that controls our most basic survival instincts, aggression, dominance, territoriality, and ritualistic behavior. It's the part of us that acts on impulse, that responds with a fight or flight reaction, that prioritizes survival over all else. It's the part of us that in many ways still thinks we're living in the wild, constantly on the hunt for food, always on guard against predators. But we're not just reptiles, we're also mammals and humans. And that's where the other two parts of our brain come in. The limbic system, or the animal brain, and the neocortex, or the human brain. The limbic system controls our emotions and memories, while the neocortex is responsible for our rational thinking, problem-solving, and decision-making abilities. But despite their sophistication, these two parts of our brain are often overpowered by the primal instincts of our reptilian brain. So, how does this all play out in our day-to-day -day lives? Well, when we make decisions based on fear, aggression, or dominance, that's our reptilian brain taking the wheel. When we act on impulse, without considering the consequences, that's our reptilian brain in control. And when we let our primitive instincts override our rational thinking, that's our reptilian brain dominating the other two parts of our brain. So if we are being controlled by this ancient part of our brain, how can we regain control? Well, that's a journey we're about to embark on. Stay tuned for the next scene where we'll explore the power struggle within our minds and how we can tip the balance in favor of our neocortex, our human brain. Have you ever felt like you're losing control? Like your actions aren't truly your own? This sensation might not be as far-fetched as it seems. You see, within each of us lies a struggle for power, a battle between the different parts of our brain. At the core of our brain structure, we have what is known as the reptilian brain. This primal part of our psyche controls our basic instincts, the desire to freeze, flee, or fight. It's the part of us that reacts instinctively without thought or consideration. Now, picture this. Imagine you're constantly playing the victim, always submitting to an aggressor or manipulator. You might feel powerless as if you're not in control of your own actions. But in reality, it's your reptilian brain that's taken the reins, driving your actions and reactions based on instinct rather than rational thought. You might wonder, how does this happen? Well, it often occurs when we're tempted to get something we desire, and in exchange, we give up a portion of our energy, our control. It's as if we've signed a contract, surrendering a piece of our freedom for a fleeting benefit. This might sound alarming, but it's a common occurrence. And it's not just about playing the victim. It can happen when we succumb to any form of temptation that requires us to compromise our values or principles. It's a subtle shift, one that might not even be noticeable at first. But over time, this power shift can lead to significant changes in our behavior, our choices, and our overall well-being. So we're left with a crucial question. How do we regain control? The answer lies within us. We need to recognize when our reptilian brain is taking over, understand why it's happening, and then take proactive steps to reclaim the driver's seat. But what if we could change this dynamic? What if we could reclaim control? Stay tuned as we delve deeper into this fascinating journey of self-discovery and transformation. Do you believe in the power of symbols, images, and metaphors? The universe, in its infinite wisdom, communicates in a language that transcends words. It speaks to us through symbols, images, and metaphors, painting a picture that is as vivid as it is profound. Consider the vast array of ancient archetypes embedded deep within our collective consciousness. These archetypes, universal symbols that resonate with us all, are more than mere constructs of our imagination. They are the universe's way of conveying truths that are otherwise difficult to articulate. And among these archetypes, none is perhaps as potent as the reptile, a symbol of primal instincts and base desires. When we see reptiles in the alpha state, we're not just witnessing a random hallucination, 
we're seeing a metaphorical representation of the reptilian brain taking control. The reptile symbolizes the primal instincts that are driving our actions, the unyielding grip of the reptilian brain on our psyche. In this context, the reptile is not an external entity, but a part of us. It's a reflection of our own instincts, our own desires, our own fears. The reptile is us, at our most primal, our most instinctive. It's a metaphor for the struggle within us, the battle between our human brain and our reptilian one. And what about those who see reptiles forcing them into contracts, compelling them to sacrifice their freedom for some fleeting benefit? Again, the universe is speaking in metaphors. The contract is a symbol of the compromises we make, the freedoms we surrender when we let our reptilian brain take control. We're not literally selling our soul to reptiles. We're metaphorically giving up our freedom to our own primal instincts. The universe is figurative, thinking in images and metaphors. It uses these metaphors to help us understand the complex dynamics of our own psyche. And when we learn to recognize and respond to these metaphors, we can start to regain control over our own lives, our own decisions, our own destiny. So what happens when we recognize these metaphors and respond to them? Ever noticed how a small mistake can snowball into a much larger problem? This is not just a metaphor, but a fundamental truth about our brains and how they operate. The smallest error in any system can lead to accumulated chaos and eventually results in the release of negative energy. When this happens, it's not the rational human part of your brain that's in control. Rather, it's the primitive reptilian part of your brain that takes the reins. Consider the analogy of a man having an affair. At first, it may seem harmless, even exciting, but as time goes on, it spirals into a drama filled with deceit and betrayal. This is the reptilian brain in action, prioritizing immediate gratification over long-term consequences. But it's not just affairs and deceit. Any decision that's made without considering the full scope of its impact can lead to this type of chaos. Whether it's neglecting our health, ignoring the needs of others, or failing to live up to our responsibilities, these are all actions driven by the reptilian brain. When we act in these ways, we're not just causing harm to ourselves and others, we're also feeding into a cycle of negative energy that can be read on the etheric plane. This energy is seen as reptilian, not because of any actual reptiles, but because of the control exerted by the reptilian brain. And here's the real kicker. The person who reads these energies often becomes fascinated by what they see. Instead of delving deeper and recognizing the true cause of these energies, they draw conclusions based on the surface level observation. They see the reptilian eyes, but fail to understand that these reptiles are merely a reflection of our own actions and decisions. But remember, we have the power to change our actions and regain control. Just as the reptilian brain can take over, so too can the human brain reassert its dominance. We have the ability to break the cycle of negative energy, to make better decisions, and to create a more positive future for ourselves and those around us. The reptiles in our brain don't have to control us. We can control them. Have you ever experienced a moment of clarity, a sudden realization that changes everything? It's like a veil lifts and suddenly you can see the landscape of your life with new eyes. This, my friends, is the beginning of transformation. In my years of practice, I've seen this transformation countless times. These are the moments when individuals realize the errors of their past decisions. They recognize the harmful habits that had them in their grasp, and they make a conscious decision to change. They choose to replace these negative habits with positive skills they choose to regain control from the reptilian brain. Here's the fascinating part. As they make these changes, as they wrestle back control from that instinctual reptilian part of the brain, something incredible happens. The reptiles they once saw in their alpha state, those manifestations of control and manipulation, they begin to disappear. They fade away along with the negative habits or decisions that once held them captive. But why does this happen? Why do these reptiles disappear? It's simple, really. As we've discussed, the universe thinks in images and metaphors. When a person gives in to temptation, when they cede control to their reptilian brain, they're effectively selling part of their freedom. They're signing a metaphorical contract with these reptiles. 
But when they decide to break that contract, when they choose to regain control, they're effectively severing ties with these reptiles. And so, the reptiles vanish. They're no longer needed as a metaphorical representation of control. The person has taken back their power, has chosen to be ruled not by instinct and temptation, but by conscious choice and mindful action. The gaze that was once clouded by manipulation and control regains its clarity and human purity. This transformation, this shift from reptilian control to conscious choice, it's a powerful journey. It's a journey of self-discovery, of personal growth, of reclaiming one's power. And the best part, this transformation is possible for each and every one of us. Do you believe in self-improvement, in the power to change oneself? Well, here's a revelation for you. We can all become reptilian in our behavior, succumbing to base instincts and primal urges. But the beauty of our human consciousness is that we can also choose to break free to regain control. When we speak of becoming reptilian, we refer to the moments when we let our primitive brain take the lead. Those moments when we act out of fear, aggression, or temptation, rather than reason and empathy. When we give in to these impulses, we lose a piece of our freedom, a piece of our humanity. But here's the good news. Just as we can slip into these reptilian tendencies, we can also choose to climb out of them. How? Through the power of self-work. Self-work is the commitment to personal growth and development. It's the dedication to understanding oneself, identifying our flaws and striving to improve. It's the courage to confront our reptilian tendencies, to understand why they emerge and to learn how to manage them. Self-work is the process through which we regain control from our reptilian brain. It's about reasserting the dominance of our neocortex, the part of our brain responsible for reasoning, empathy, and human consciousness. When we engage in self-work, we start making conscious, deliberate choices about our actions and reactions. We stop acting out of instinct and start acting out of understanding. We stop reacting out of fear and start responding with empathy. We stop being slaves to our impulses and start being masters of our minds. And the most beautiful part, the moment we commit to self-work, the moment we start to regain control, our reptilian tendencies start to fade away. Our actions become more human, our reactions more compassionate, our decisions more conscious. So yes, we can all become reptilian, but we can also all choose to change, to grow, to evolve. We can choose to work on ourselves, to regain control, to reclaim our humanity, because at the end of the day, the power to change, to regain control lies within us. So what have we learned today? We've delved deep into the fascinating world of the human brain, specifically the reptilian brain, one of the three mics that controls our instincts. We've seen how, when under the control of this primal part of our psyche, we can succumb to actions that are not in our best interest, actions that are driven by instinct rather than conscious thought. We've discovered that the universe communicates with us in metaphors and images, and when we see reptiles during an alpha state, it's a reflection of our own reptilian brain taking the reins. These reptiles symbolize the loss of control, the surrender of our freedom for fleeting benefits. We've touched on the consequences of this loss of control, like a single error in a system leading to an accumulation of chaos, falling prey to our reptilian instincts can result in a whirlwind of negative energy. This energy manifests in our reality as harmful habits or decisions that affect not only us, but those around us as well. But it's not all doom and gloom. We've also explored the transformative power of self-work, the ability to regain control from our reptilian brain. When we acknowledge our mistakes, change our habits, and make conscious decisions, we affect a change so profound that the metaphorical reptiles disappear from our perception. The gaze regains its clarity and human purity, signifying the return of control to the neocortex, the human brain. And therein lies the crux of our discussion. We are not at the mercy of our reptilian brain. We have the power to regain control, to make decisions that are rooted in thoughtfulness and consideration rather than instinct. It's a process that requires work, self-reflection, and a commitment to change. Remember, the power to change and to regain control lies within us. It's time to harness that power.